神秘を解き明かす Hello everyone This is my first video covering material from The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. For it, I wanted to cover music from earlier stages of the game so that folks don't need to worry about any major spoilers. Even though it's from early in the game, Lookout Landing is my favorite new song from Tears of the Kingdom, and it's kind of for fun and esoteric reasons. Let's look at what makes this song so strong and unique the woodwinds. Let's first briefly talk about the instrumentation for this piece. We have sort of an enhanced military fife and drum song to represent the highly invasive operations for exploring a world changed by the upheaval. There's snare drum and solo trumpet, which certainly contribute to that military feel. Remember, though, this is a Nintendo game, not Elden Ring. So we want to give this military theme a bit of lightness and innocence to make it appropriate for the intended audience. The TOTK music team achieved this correct tone as well as a nice continuity with the rest of the game's wind centered music by focusing the rest of the arrangement on the woodwinds. Beyond the piano, which is basically the understood main character instrument held over from Breath of the Wild, I'd say the other two main characters of this theme are the bassoon and the recorder. We first set up the A section with this deep blare from the two bassoons in fifths. Then the main melody is taken by Sopranino, Sopranino recorder. And then by bassoon and piccolo, which we'll talk about later. Woodwinds are already a lot quirkier and less homogenous than, say, strings or brass, with the flute family, oboe family, and clarinet family each having very distinct sounds from one another. Even within that, however, I would say that bassoon and sopranino recorder were two of the quirkiest and goofiest options available for this piece's soloist. It's just awesome. And don't get me wrong, I quite enjoy the bassoon, and partially because of its prominence in Zelda music, I actually decided to start learning some myself. <laughs> When I call the instrument choices goofy here, I don't mean bad. Recall my comment about the aesthetic goals here. This isn't Dark Souls, it's Zelda. Pura and the gang have an air of young and eccentric genius that makes these instrument choices a great fit to represent their base of operations. Especially the recorder. I don't think I've played the recorder since elementary school. The relaxed tone of these glassy wind pads and the hand drum are also just so lovely. <laughs> It almost sounds like a group of recruits having a relaxed jam around the campfire. Fourths and fifths, doubling at the twelfth. Let's talk a bit more about that bassoon line and how it's thickened with support from the piano's right hand and the piccolo. On the piano staff here, I've pasted the bassoon and piccolo lines color coded by instrument and moved them into the closest octave so that it's a bit visually clearer what's going on. <laughs> As I've talked about elsewhere before, harmonizing a line in parallel fourths or fifths is very idiomatic to modern East Asian composition. Okay, that's all well and good. We have parallel movement of a stack of two fifths. Three fifths, in fact, when the second piccolo comes in. So we're really using the full range of the woodwind section. But these aren't just fifths, they're octaves plus fifths, which are called twelfths. The piano is an octave plus a fifth above the bassoon, and the piccolo is an octave plus a fifth above the piano. We can see doubling at the twelfth in other examples from contemporary Japanese music, like in this section from Ryuchi Sakamoto's Blue. I also implemented it in the end of my song Akigami. This is a very specific sound, and I think it's best we explain it using the overtone series. Namely, doubling a line at the twelfth reinforces the line's second harmonic. Now, if that sentence just sounded like a jargon knot to you, there are several videos where you can learn about the harmonic series, 
but my favorite so far is this one from Andrew Huang. Now, an interesting aspect of perfect twelfths like this is that because of the overlap between the second harmonic of the lower line with the upper line, the blended sound makes sense to our ear even if the upper voice ends up going out of key. We can see that here where the bassoon stays almost completely in C Dorian, but the piano and piccolo need all these accidentals because they walk out of the key. <laughs> Building in fifths like this is basically the key to what some have called the super Lydian sound, or the notion of building chords in fifths in a way that goes beyond the seven diatonic notes of a major or Lydian scale. Now that's its whole own rabbit hole, but if you want to hear more mind-bending stuff about that, be sure to check out my earlier video here on the Circle of Fifths. I'll let you nerds figure it out on your own, but to give you a taste of how crazy this stuff is, if considered over the E flat chord in the bass, the two chords formed by the upper voices in the last beat of bar 20 can technically be thought of as being spelled major seven, sharp 11, sharp 15, and then sharp 11, sharp 15, sharp 19, sharp 23. So these were the main two things I wanted to point out about Lookout Landing. There's some fun variants of this piece introduced later in the game, so if you'd like to hear me cover those in the future, let me know in the comments and I'll go ahead and do so if there's enough interest. You can also let me know if there's other songs from Tears of the Kingdom that we should have a look at together. As always, if you want to join in some deeper discussions on this type of stuff, feel free to join my Discord at the link in the description. I'm also taking more private composition students, so feel free to reach out to me for details if you're curious about that. But until next time, jane.